We feel the presence of the body. Bring attention to that. How is the body sitting? Whether it's on a a cushion, a mat, or a chair, a stool. How is it? Consciously feeling the presence of the body and the quality of the posture. As we bring attention to the body, notice if there's a that uh, stressing or tensing habit there in our hands or our shoulders, our face, around the eyes or the, around the abdomen. And rather than thinking, oh, I'm really tense, I need to relax. develop the skill of just letting the awareness receive those feelings, those sensations, let them change on their own, let the power of awareness, attention, have its own effect, rather than I've got to do something to make myself right, inviting awareness into the, into the sphere of experience bringing awareness, attention, to focus on the feelings of the body, let that awareness have its own effect. The sun evaporating the dew in the morning. The sun warms up, the dew, the moisture, fades from the grass, from the leaves, does it on its own. Similarly, if you bring attention to the body and you find that it's slumped over, listless, bring attention to that, to that slumped feeling. Rather than the I should sit up straight attitude, bringing awareness to the posture, the body straighten on its own. Allow it to respond. Let that awakened awareness have its own natural, simple effect. Feeling the body breathing. Again, this is not something that I, as a person, as an agent, have to do. We use words like, I breathe, or I am breathing. But really, the I am doesn't have to be involved at all. The body breathes on its own. It's like the wind blows and the the leaves of the trees move. The earth turns and the sun rises in the morning sets in the evening. At night the stars come out. In the day, the stars are all buried in the blue bowl of the sky. I don't have to do anything with it. Nature does it on its own. The body breathes on its own. It's not something that requires a a doer an agent. So as we bring attention to the breath, just let the the breath rest upon the attention, upon the awareness. Not a thing that I am doing, but here it is. There's a rhythm, a flow of sensation that's known that's observed, that's felt. Letting the body breathe on its own, according to its own natural rhythm, its own pace. 
whether it's deep or shallow, long or short, here it is, this rhythm in this moment. We use the breath as a simple, tangible, natural way to focus the attention here with the present reality. The body is ever present. The breath is ever present. So it's an easy, tangible, accessible way of bringing attention to this Pachupana Dhamma, the present moment, the present reality. This is now the third day of our community retreat. Oh, hopefully the, the system is settling down a bit. We put aside other responsibilities, activities, duties, just to focus on the formal practice. This allows the system to settle, to integrate. As the attention rests more easily with the present, You find that the, the mind is wandering a bit less, not so easily distracted, carried away, lost in thoughts and fantasies, memories, worries, regrets, nostalgia for the past, planning for the future. As and when the attention rests more easily in the present, And we can allow the focus of attention to expand, to be wider, broader. The body is still here, the breath is still here, but we can open the attention to include, consciously, deliberately, the sounds we hear around us, patterns of light and shade. In the walking meditation, the, the movements of the body, the changing landscape around us, the trees in the sky, the grass underfoot, the stones of the, of the pathways, the roads. We can open the field of attention to receive the flow of experience. We use the breath as a specific object, simply as a way to key the attention to this present reality. It's a skillful means, it's not a, a thing of fixed and absolute value. It's a method, a tool that can be used. The point is to have the attention grounded with the present reality. So if the attention is resting easily with the present, there's no need to fix rigidly upon the breath alone. Or if we're walking on the footsteps, we can consciously expand the field of attention. In a way, the breath is still a useful model for us, even if the field of attention is broader, more open. The way the breath works can be a model for that development of open awareness and the cultivation of insight. rather than just the lungs breathing in the oxygen and nitrogen of the atmosphere and then 
absorbing the oxygen into the blood, letting go of the carbon dioxide, breathing out. As we open the attention, we can breathe in the whole moment, breathing in, taking in, opening the heart to the patterns of this moment, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thought, patterns of imagination and memory, breathing in all the qualities of the present moment, taking them in, knowing them, letting them go, just as the lungs breathe in the air, absorb the oxygen, which is the life source, which maintains the vitality, the, the life force of the body, breathing out the carbon dioxide, letting it go, that which is not needed. In exactly the same way, we can breathe in all of the patterns of the present moment experience. Sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thought, emotion, memory, imagination. Taking it in, knowing it. Here it is, the pattern of this moment, the sound of my voice, the feelings of the body, the weight of the body, the sensation of the clothes on the skin, patterns of light, on the eyelids, various aches and pains, sensations in the body. Here it is. It's exactly this way in this moment. And just as the oxygen in the atmosphere is the enlivening force of the body, so too that mindful awakened awareness of the qualities of experience, that's the life source. Mindfulness is the path to the deathless. Heedlessness is the path to death. The mindful never die. The heedless are as if dead already. And mindfulness, that awakened awareness, that's the life source. That knowing. That's the heart of life. Deathlessness. And letting go, those conditions, the sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, that have been recognized as empty, ownerless, transient, they're let go of, just like the carbon dioxide is released from the body. The empty conditions are let go of. Anicca vata sankara, all conditions are impermanent. Upadavaya damino, they arise and pass away. Upachitava nirujanti, having integrated, they disintegrate. Te sang upa samo sukho, and in their passing, there is peace. So in each moment, as the mind settles and more steadily aware of the pattern of each present experience. Take it in, know it. Recognize this is the empty qualities of sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thought. Void of substance. Not a self, not belonging to a self. And then they're let go of like the empty husks of a, of a seed, let go of. There's no substance there. Now to sustain that quality of openness, that freshness of attention, and there's tools that we customarily use to help the mind not to get caught in like and dislike, not to drift off into dullness, sleepiness. The way of actively processing, looking at 
the content of each moment. To, rec to recognize, to recollect, this is empty, ownerless, unable to satisfy in and of itself. The reflections on anicca, dukkha, anatta, on uncertainty and change, unsatisfactoriness, ownerlessness, selflessness. We actively bring these reflections to bear upon the flow of perception, to remember these are empty, ownerless. Void of substance. So we're not just repeating the words anicca, dukkha, anatta, but rather it's an active investigation of putting on your glasses to see clearly and recognizing, oh look, that's what the letters are, that's what the shape is. It's clear now. So we apply those reflections on anicca, dukkha, anatta, to bring about that change of heart, to see, to know. The body is empty, not self. Sensations, feelings, they're empty, they're not self. Perceptions, sanya, empty, they're not self. Mental formations, moods, memories, ideas, opinions, they're empty, they're not self, they're transient. The very fabric of sense consciousness. These are all just patterns of perception, little blips of mental activity coming into being, taking shape, dissolving. They're not a person, they don't belong to a person. They're all aspects of nature. Dhamma jati, born of the Dhamma. Dhamma tittata. They are stable. The lawfulness, the structure of them is fundamentally that of the Dhamma. They're natural. Dhamma niyamata. They function according to the laws of nature. It's not personal. This memory, this feeling, this emotion. It might look and feel like a person, but it's a pattern of nature. How could it not be? It's felt here, it's known here, within this sphere of experience, but in itself, it's Dhamma Titata, established in Dhamma. Its fabric is the Dhamma. Dhamma Niyamata functions according to the laws of nature arises and passes away. And in that seeing, seeing the empty, ownerless, natural quality of all experience, what happens? The heart lets go. There's a spaciousness, a freedom. That which knows the conditions isn't a condition. That which knows beginnings and endings is ever present. It's not tied to that. It's not limited by all the arisings and passings, the beginnings and endings. This quality of awakened awareness, vicha, it knows the world, but it is not limited by the world. It is lokutara, transcends the world. Now, during these early days of a retreat, maybe just a few times during a sitting, or a few times during the day, this kind of clarity of vision is established. But even if it's just for a moment, take that to heart. Notice how in that moment, oh my goodness, it's exactly like this. Look at that. Let that be the ground that you measure everything by. Let that be 
the, the reference point, that moment of clarity, trust that, know that. Let that be what guides you. That moment of clear seeing, when it's known, oh, this is just a, an empty sensation. This is the feeling of I, it's also empty. Ah. Take that to heart, notice that. And even if the mind gets lost, distracted in particular perceptions and feelings, moods, that reference point is still there in the background. The heart remembers, oh, of course, I know this is empty, but I'm temporarily distracted. But in my heart of hearts, I know there's nothing solid really there. And the more we develop that, strengthen that, trust that vision, trust that quality of wisdom, the more accessible that it becomes, the more that becomes an abiding presence. It's established as a basic attitude, a framework. The way the heart holds the flow of all experience.